All right, we're back. Uh, this time, another updated mock draft. Um, can't remember what we did last time. Pretty sure we had CJ going number one. Pretty sure we did the post post Panthers Bears trade mock. Uh, this time, uh, we're just gonna do one. Uh, probably one of our last ones before we get right up until the draft. Um, today is the 24th of March. I think the draft is in mid to late April. Um, we'll probably just have one more probably the day before or the day of the draft. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to enter the draft challenge on the NFL, NFL.com draft challenge. Uh, we're going to see how we do there. Um, possibly could be live streaming the entire draft, uh, reaction on YouTube. Uh, so you're going to want to check that out. Uh, it'll be fun for everybody. So, uh, keep a lookout for that. Um, yeah. And, uh, other than that, uh, let's go ahead and get started with our, a mock, a draft. So start with CJ going number one. After we saw at his pro day, we saw clearly, uh, the the love and the appreciation, the adoration he got from the Carolina Panthers brass. Uh, Josh McCowan was telling him, hey, when you live in Charlotte, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, find some courts. I'm assuming to play basketball or something. Uh, the owner of the Panthers, I believe Tepper is his name, was shaking CJ Stroud's hand to give him a bro hug and Frank Reich was there and it was the writing is on the wall they fucking love this kid and they're gonna take him number one overall which works out for the Texans because I'm assuming they would have taken Bryce Young anyway maybe I don't know could have been different they could have liked CJ Stroud but they get Bryce Young that leaves Will Anderson going to Alabama well, not from Alabama, going to Arizona. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, when it comes to the debate of uh, Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, I can certainly see both sides of the argument. Uh, all along the process, I was, okay, Bryce Young, I see why everyone says if he was 6'2", he'd be the number one pick in this draft. But he's not 6'2". He's 5'10". 190 at best. I know he weighed 200 pounds at the combine. He does not weigh 200 pounds normally. He was putting on weight. He might have had a little extra to eat the night before. He might have been holding in a little bit of water, drinking a shitload of water. So uh, there's just too much of... of. So th there's two worries when you look at these two quarterbacks. The first worry for me about Stroud is... He does tend to struggle under pressure. When you look at Ohio State, anytime the offensive line was getting beat by a defensive line that was getting pressure on him, his play went down dramatically. I mean, he would throw, he would not throw well under pressure. He did had a hard time escaping the pocket. When he would escape the pocket, uh, he wasn't nearly as accurate as he was inside the pocket all the way up until the Georgia game in which he was incredible off schedule, incredible under pressure, and uh, absolutely dominated that game. Bryce Young lives on that stuff. He's the magician. He's the, you know, makes off schedule plays. He's the playmaker, whereas Stroud is the sit-in-the-pocket guy. But when did we start hating that? When did we start hating the guy who just sits in the pocket and throws darts all over the field and is better in a clean pocket than he is under pressure versus the guy we... The whole argument, I thought, of the whole analytics community and PFF who we're using right now is every quarterback struggles under pressure, so it's a very volatile stat. So it's like the more indicative of how good you are is how good you are in a clean pocket because that's what you're going to be dealing with a majority of the time and what obviously every offense will be striving for. Nobody strives for an offense to say, okay, we need a quarterback who's good under pressure because we're going to have a guy under pressure all the time. It's like, well, no, how about you just get a better offensive line? How about you just scheme things up better? How about you create uh, open throwing lanes and in quick amounts of time and uh, good sound pockets? Like, 
when did the pocket passer get over usurped by the playmaker uh, is interesting to me. So I can sort of see why a lot of people like CJ Stroud better. He's six foot three. He's two hundred fifteen pounds. He's got a great arm. He's got perfect mechanics. He's deadly accurate. He's young. He's coming out as a uh, redshirt junior or a redshirt sophomore or a true junior, whatever. Like he's got the total package. Now I do worry about the fact that he had an incredible, incredible supporting cast at Ohio State both years. First year, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Marvin Harrison Jr., Emeka Ibuka. All five of those guys are going to be first-round picks. Maybe Emeka Ibuka, maybe not. But all five of those guys, in my opinion, are first-round picks. At least all four of the guys of Olave, Wilson, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Marvin Harrison Jr. At worst, Ekbuka is a second-round pick, probably a first-round pick. Then you look at the offensive line. Paris Johnson, DeWad Jones. He, he had a wall around him. So he had one of the best situations in the history of college football. And quite frankly, the team underachieved not because of him. The defense was terrible. They didn't run the ball as well as they should have. But that worries me. So he did have an incredible situation. And what bothers me is that that's used as a knock against Stroud, but it's not used as a knock against Young. And I understand that he did not have the receivers that Ohio State has. He did not. But still fucking Alabama. Why is there construction going on above me? Why? Why? Let's just get this over with then. All right, well... This is happening, like, right next to me. Oh, Jesus Christ. Shut the fuck up. I'm going to fucking start throwing shit at them. Okay, bro. I just threw a bunch of shit at the wall. Construction. Will Anderson. Now, I want to preface this. This is not what I would do. I'm not a Will Levis guy. But I think he goes right here. I think they take the flyer on Jalen Carter. I think the Lions take Devon Witherspoon. I think the Raiders. Oh, Anthony Richardson. Oh. But that's where they take.
Shut up! I'm gonna kill myself. I'm actually gonna end my life. I'm actually gonna end my life right now, bro. You're ruining my mock draft 4.0. Fuckers. They're not going to trade this, but they are going to trade that. That. The Packers for Aaron Rodgers. They get two seconds back to back second round picks this year and a first next year for Rodgers. It's a lot. It's a lot. Holy shit. Oh my god. Kill me. Seriously, just absolutely kill me right now. This is this is who does a hundred percent.
I apologize. I'm having a good time. I am fucking... Yep. Yep. Yep! Yeah, it's be a little louder, huh? Wait. Thank Christ! I don't think I could have handled any more. Show me my mock. And that's the mock draft 4.0. Peace.